Hello, I'm Mrs. Jansen, and today in our art, we'll be creating rooftops and facades. Let's look at these rooftops. They might remind you of the rooftops where we live. Our first vocabulary word is facade, and it means the front of a building. Let's look at the first three letters in the word facade, F-A-C. A facade is often called the face of a building as well. Remember an architect makes plans for buildings? You can see that the architect that created these buildings added a lot of interesting details. Notice how the rooftops or the peak of the roof is different. Notice the different shapes that you see for the windows and the doors. Notice the difference in materials that have been used. You see brick, stone, and wood. And lastly, you notice the different colors used in paint. Our next vocabulary word is overlap to extend one object over part of another object. Notice how many times you see one house cover another house. Our art today is influenced by American author and illustrator, Tommy De Paola. Do you like to write stories and make your own books? Well, that's what Tommy De Paola liked to do. At age 10, he made a book for his sister on her birthday. It was titled Glamera, the Story of a Mermaid. He has written over 270 books. His book titled Stragonona won the Caldecott Award for the illustrations, the pictures, and the artwork. Here we see another book that Tommy De Paola wrote and illustrated. And notice the rooftops and notice how often they overlap. I'm sure you've already noticed the giant in the center of the rooftops. We're not going to add a giant in our artwork today but we are going to have a lot of overlapping buildings and rooftops. Here you see Tommy De Paola at work in his studio in New London, New Hampshire. So Tommy De Paola knew he wanted to be an artist since he was four years old. As a young child, he told his family that he wanted to write stories, that's an author, draw pictures for books, that's an artist or an illustrator. He also wanted to sing and tap dance on the stage. And he did all of those things when he grew up. Now it's time for us to make our art together. Please have your paper and pencil ready. You'll need crayons for later. You'll see my screen change so that we can draw together. So today we're going to create our art portrait style. That means our paper is vertical or the tall way. So place your paper portrait style vertically. And the first thing we're going to do is bring the bottom of the paper to the top. When we bring the bottom of the paper to the top, and line it up with the top edge of the paper. Make sure the corners match. And then this roll at the bottom, go ahead and press on it with your finger firmly all the way across the paper. We're creating a fold. 
So now we have this fold and it's open at the top. We folded the paper in half and now we're going to bring the bottom of the paper up again to the top. And same thing, where we have this roll, go ahead and press your finger on that roll and press it down firmly all the way across the width of the paper. So now we've actually created folds. And when you open up your paper, you'll see those four horizontal folds but we've actually created lines. So I'd like you to look at your paper and if it goes up where it folds, you'll want to turn it over. And notice how it goes down. We're actually going to use these lines as guidelines. So we're not going to draw on every single horizontal line all the way across. Sometimes we'll only use part of the line. So we're going to start drawing the shapes of the buildings. I'm going to show you a, a work in progress or an example of what our artwork might look like when we're finished. So as we draw today, you're gonna to be making different choices. We're gonna draw the shapes of the buildings first, and then we'll be adding the rooftops, and then you're going to be adding your own ideas and details. So we're going to draw on this first horizontal line and as we draw, we're on that fold. We're actually using that fold as a guideline. So I just decided how wide my first building would be. And now I'm going to add the edge of the building. So it's a vertical line that goes to the bottom of the paper. And now I'm going to add my second building. I'm going to add a small vertical line on top of that vertical line I just drew. This is going to be the edge of the second building and I want it to appear a little bit taller. And now I'm going to add another straight horizontal line. I'm going to decide how I, wide I'd like this building. And now what I've decided, I'm going to add a vertical line that goes down to the bottom of the paper. I'm going to stay at these two buildings first, and I'm going to decide what the rooftop looks like. I'm going to add a diagonal line, and then at the top, another horizontal line that goes off the page. So we don't know how large this building is. We only see part of it. And now when I get to the second building, I've decided that I'd like the rooftop to be different. You can use your own ideas. I'm going to add a curved line. It looks more like a semicircle for this rooftop. And we're only going to add right now the overall shape of the building to include the face or facade and the rooftop. Now I'd like to draw a clock tower. So this time I'm going to start at the bottom of the paper and I'm going to draw a vertical line that goes past that horizontal fold, and I'm going to add this vertical line all the way up to the second fold on my paper. Now I'm going to go 
to that fold and add a horizontal line that goes off to the edge of the paper. And I'd like the roof of this clock tower to have a tall peak. So I'm going to add two sides of a triangle. And now you can decide what shape you'd like the clock to be. Uh, some of you might decide you'd like the clock at the very top, or maybe you decide that you'd like it at the bottom. It's up to you. I'm going to just sketch a circle. You get to decide what, what you'd like yours to be. And it's a sketch. It doesn't have to be a perfect circle. And remember, just take away any lines that you don't want. And I'm going to add a vertical line along the right edge of the paper for the side of the clock tower facade. So now we're going to have overlap. And we're going to start the next building. I'm going to use this fold as a guideline. And the next building I add starts at the fold. And now I'm going to decide how wide I'd like this building. I'd like it narrower than the one in front of it. So I'm going to stop and add a vertical line. And now I'm going to start the second building, and I want it to be fairly close to the first building, so I'm going to, going to add a vertical line, and this time it's going to go to the fold again, and I'm going to add the width of this building with a horizontal line that goes along the fold. And it's going to stop close to the clock tower. Now I know this edge needs to go down the vertical line. And if it comes to something you've already drawn, make sure to pick up your pencil. Remember, everyone's art's going to be different. And as I draw with you today, I'm giving you idea starters. Yours does not have to look exactly like mine. I know you've got great ideas. So now when we get to the rooftops on these two buildings, you can decide what shape you'd like to use. I'm going to use a smaller triangle for this building. And then I'd like to add a rooftop that looks different than every rooftop before. I'm going to start it with two diagonal lines. And then I'm going to add a horizontal line and more of the shape of a rectangle on top. So now I've already created a lot of overlap. It looks like I've got the front or the foreground. Remember that's the area of the art that's closest to the viewer usually at the bottom of the page. Now we're in the middle ground with this second row of buildings. And now we're ready to go to the third. I'm going to decide how wide this building is. And this time I'm going to decide that by adding the vertical line first. And then I'm going to use that fold as my guideline to help me draw a straight line. And now I'm going to wait on the rooftop till I've drawn all the buildings in this row. And then I'm going to make my choices. I'm going to add another building. This one's going to be a little taller. And now I'm gonna look at my art and decide how wide I'd like this building to be. Okay. 
and I'm going to add the third building. Now I'm going to look at these three buildings and I'm going to decide what the rooftops look like. I'm thinking of an old city in Europe. So I think I'd like to add what's called an onion top. So I'm going to add those curved lines. Looks starts to look a lot like a semicircle like we did before. But then it goes up. A lot of you might be thinking that it looks like a chocolate candy. It might remind you of a chocolate candy, you know. And remember, if you want to change a line, you just add a new one next to it, and then you take away the line that you don't want. So as you decide what rooftop you'd like, think of different peaks or interesting shapes. And in a lot of old European cities, there are still castles that you can see in the distance. So I think I'm going to add a castle. And I'm going to start with a horizontal line and then a vertical line. This is going to be the castle wall. And you can decide how large you'd like the castle to be in your artwork by determining how many horizontal and vertical lines you use to create the top of the castle wall. I know I wanted to leave room to show the sky. So now it's time for us to go back to our rooftops. And I'm going to just show you a couple of different examples. So this is an example in progress. And all these examples look a little bit different, but notice how you can use curved or scallop lines on a rooftop. You can use diagonal lines or zigzag. You can add a lot of interesting details. So you wanna add those in pencil first, and then what you'll do is color the rooftops, any color of your choice, with light pressure. And that's when later you'll add black crayon. So in this example, you can see after the rooftops have been added that different shape windows and doors have been added. And then I decided that I wanted to add a vine on the castle wall. I also decided that I wanted it to be a night sky. So I added a crescent shaped moon and some stars. If you decide that you'd like it to be nighttime, you might want to color in the windows thinking of what the windows would look like if the lights were on. So you don't have to color all of the windows because some of the rooms may not have the lights on. And if you'd like it to look like it's dark, you can color the inside of those windows black. When it comes to the sky, you're deciding what time, time of day it is at your city. 
So you don't have to have a night sky. Maybe you decide that it's daytime. Some of you might want to create the northern, northern lights. That's up to you. When it comes to the clock on the clock tower, you can decide what it looks like. It doesn't have to be a circle. You don't have to draw the numbers. You can just use marks. As you add the marks on the clock, if you think about the face of the clock, remember how the number 12 and the number six are exactly across from each other. So that's how you remember where to place your, your marks. And the nine and the three are across from each other. And if you do those four first, then you know that you need the other marks in between. So you can be thinking, about where the numbers are on a clock. So it's the details that will make your rooftops and facades look really interesting. Remember to use your own creativity and ideas and you can change the pressure that you use as you're coloring. So I hope you've enjoyed creating your art today, and I look forward to creating art with you again soon.